it's that time of year or if you're watching this video it may be you're thinking about that time of year that's right our shops are cold how are we going to heat these things Hey everybody, my name is Sam and welcome back to Samcraft. In today's video, I'm going to take you along to the land of opinion, my opinion. I want to talk to you guys about the three different heat sources I have used in my workshop over the years, their pros, their cons, and tell you what I have ultimately settled on to be my perfect heat solution for my small workshop. The first heat source that most woodworkers probably think of when they're in the world of woodworking and they're cold is... I'm just going to set some of the stuff on fire so I can stay warm. So that brings us to heat source number one, wood stoves. Wood stoves have a couple of pros, but they have more cons than pros in my book. The pros of wood heat in your workshop is that the fuel is sustainable. You can use your scraps from the workshop. It has a feel good feeling. You guys know what I'm talking about. The warmth and the ambiance of a wood stove and crackling fire and just noise puts you in the mood to make more wood scraps doesn't it and last on the pro list is that it's cheap ish wood stoves themselves can be expensive or cheap the one i had in my workshop was made out of an ammo box that had been hacked apart and made to be a firebox it was not the most efficient thing in the world but it did contain the fire kept me from burning down my workshop and was pretty cheap in the end so what are the reasons that Sam doesn't have his wood stove anymore? Why did he get rid of it if it was so great? First and foremost, it did not fit with my personal schedule as a person in a workshop. What I mean by that is I am in and out of my shop a lot throughout the day. I might be down in my workshop for one hour at a time or eight hours at a time. It kind of fluctuates and I don't have set hours and blocks of time that I am just committed to workshop time. That being the case, a lot of times I found myself needing to leave the shop while my wood stove was still going, or being down here knowing that I wasn't going to be here long enough to even bother with building a wood fire and was just cold and miserable the whole time. Another con of a wood stove is it can be stinky, especially if you don't know how to build a fire properly. If you're burning scrap wood with finishes, stains, and plywood of the sort, which you shouldn't do by the way. And if your wood stove is not efficient, you're going to be going in the house smelling like Smokey the Bear. Now, depending on your wife or your rustic charm abilities, this may not be a con. But for me, where I would be in the workshop working and then going into the house or going somewhere else, I kind of didn't like smelling like a wood stove all the time. My last con against the wood stove is that its fuel, being firewood, is time or labor intensive. I have a thousand irons in the fire. So I don't have a lot of free time to chop wood, stack it, cure it, dry it, bring it in, build it, and then start the fire to put those irons right back in. So there are my reasons for and against having a wood stove in your workshop, and for me, my reasons why I had one and got rid of it. Heat source number two that I'm going to talk about is propane. And I have here my little propane heater. I used this guy for probably a year and a half solid and was a very good heat source for me. So here are the pros of propane. The pro propane pros. Propane's good because it is a clean and efficient heat source. It's quick to heat up. You can turn the switch on and with the model like this, be rocking and rolling, sweating, take your shirts off within about 10 minutes, depending on how close you are to the heater. Another benefit is that this is portable. This unit itself is a cabinet style unit. It runs off of a regular propane grill tank you may find on your barbecue, and it is easily carried from spot to spot. Let's say, for instance, your workshop is not insulated, or it's not insulated well. In that case, a portable propane heater like this does very well to pretty much drag it along with you wherever you work to give yourself localized hot zones of heat. Wow, sounds like I'm pretty sold on propane, right? Well, not exactly. Well, okay, rather, not anymore. So here are the reasons why I no longer use this little guy. First and foremost is that it's not a safe heater to leave unattended. I cannot fire this thing up, go away from my workshop, let it continue to heat and warm the space, and come back without ever being afraid of just burning the whole world down. That concern is more specific to this model itself, not being thermostatically controlled and being kind of more of an entry-level heater, but it's still one that I ran into that never gave me the warm, fuzzy feelings of 
it's okay. The shop's heated. We're not about to burn everything down. The second con for me is that there's no remote control feature for this heat source. I cannot be somewhere else, turn this thing on, and allow it to heat up my workshop before I arrive. Likewise, I can't let it run after I leave to keep the whole place above freezing overnight. But that kind of goes into the first reason I don't have propane anymore, so yeah. The third con with propane is really not that big of an issue, and well, I guess if I'm truthful, I did also put it in the pros section, so I don't really know where I stand on this, but you do have to swap out the fuel source. There is some amount of effort you must exert to take the tank out, drive to a location, get it filled or swap it out, and bring it back. That is not an issue for me as far as labor, but if time and efficiency of you've got 24 hours in your day, what are you going to do with it? is a factor, then yes, okay, the time you have to fill your propane tanks up and swap them out and drive and all that stuff, eh, not the most convenient. So that brings me, and you if you're still with me, to heat source number three and what I am now using in my workshop. That is electric heat. I'll go ahead and start this off with a disclaimer of up until this point, I never considered electric heat an option because I never had an enclosed insulated workshop. Thankfully, six years after building the structure itself, I was finally able to finish insulating the entire thing and sealing it up to where it's now insulated and not just a wind prone shed of the elements. So here are Sam's pros for electric heat. First, it is clean and efficient. It is a quick heat, you know, if you have a powerful enough heater, it'll get hot pretty quick. It's easy to install. You don't have to worry with gas or chimneys. It is not an open flame. It is pretty safe. And you can have preheat, remote control, and timer functionality with electric heat. The cons with electric heat is that you need an insulated space for them to really be worth the money you pump in to heating a space. I guess the same thing could be said about wood heat and propane but it feels more important with electric for some reason. Maybe that's just me. Another consideration is that if you're in a woodworking shop and you are generating a lot of dust, that could affect your electric heater. I try and keep a pretty clean workshop and keep dust to a minimum, so I'm not too concerned about dust with my electric heater, although it might be something you're worried about and wanna check into. The third con for electric heat is one that puts it in between propane and wood heat, possibly, and that's the price. Electric heaters of a substantial size and quality are not exactly the cheapest things in the world, but they're a lot cheaper than an expensive wood stove. So now we get to the point of the video where I get to tell you that I am now an electric heat man. I will no longer use a wood stove. Well, I haven't used one in years. My propane cabinet has been relegated to storage and I am running solely on grid. <laughs> For me, the pros of having an electric heater never made sense and it wasn't ever something that was on my table until I insulated my workshop. Prior to that, I was fine with having more hot zones in my shop because any amount of money or fuel or effort I put into heating the space just went out all the cracks and roof and wherever else heat went. Now that my workshop is all insulated, I can now start thinking about heating as an investment rather than an immediate need. What I mean by that is the heat that I put into the space gets retained longer, so I feel like I get a bigger benefit from heating the space than I did in the past. I poured through a lot of videos on YouTube and on the internet at large looking at different electric heat styles. Do you have things such as electric radiant heaters, you know, the old field radiator style? You have newer model infrared electric panels that kind of basically microwave you in your workshop. And then you have the classic forced air heaters where it's an element of electricity in the box and air blows through it and you kind of have hot air that way. After a lot of research and price comparisons, I decided to go with a product by Heatstorm and it is a garage model heater that they sell. It is a small factor heater. It is not that large and is not that heavy. It also mounts to the wall or on the ceiling, but the coolest feature about it is that it's Wi-Fi controlled. I can put an app on my smartphone and I can adjust the temperature whether or not I'm in my workshop. In addition to that, I can program timers. Let's say I want it to keep the shop at 45 degrees overnight. Yet at eight o'clock in the morning, go ahead and crank the heat up to 65. I can do that, pretty cool. One of the biggest things about electric heat is the power consumption and depending on your utility costs or the way you get electricity, this may be a, a no-go for you. For me, it's an okay go. 
The power consumption of this thing is 6,000 watts when running, and that's nothing to sneeze at. It is a 240 volt heater, so you've got to have that amount of power supply in your workshop, but that's kind of what you get into when you get to heat sources of this size anyway. If you are interested to learn more about the electric heater that I have for my workshop, there is a separate dedicated video linked down below for the complete unboxing, assembly, installation, and two month follow up of the heater itself. I wanted to give you guys the option to watch it or not and not bore you or drag you out on this video too long. There you have it. Sam crafts three different heat sources and his pros and cons for it. I'm interested. What do you guys use in your workshop? Do you use it because that's what you found to be the best? Or are you kind of in that middle ground and this is the best solution for you? If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, take care and I'll see you guys next time in the workshop.